Who has been the biggest camp surprise for the Dallas Cowboys? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team every locked, day. Locked, locked on. Locked, locked, locked on. Locked on Cowboys. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Lot On Cowboys podcast, part of the Lot On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, it's Landon McCool out in Oxnard, California. Follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. We want to remind you guys that because the Cowboys have a practice today, we're going to be doing two shows the second show is going to be live on YouTube at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time. So make sure you tune in for that. But Landon, today we're getting to your Twitter questions. Let's, let's dive right into them. First one from Tyler. He wants to know, who has been the biggest standout at camp that isn't a quote-unquote superstar? Well, the superstar part was the, the part that we kind of had to parse a little bit, I feel like. Um, you know, I think I kind of mentioned him uh, a couple different times. I got two names of guys that I felt like have had really good camps, uh, that are not superstars, uh, necessarily. Uh, one is uh, Oso Digizua. Uh, I, I felt like, again, we've mentioned him in, in yesterday's show. If, if I'm they're all starting to run together, uh, but I think it was yesterday's show. Uh, I, you know, just going back and watching some of the drills and stuff, it's hard, right? Because defensive tackles, uh, it's hard to shine when you have limited padded practice. Uh, so we've we've gotten a couple of these under our belt now. We, I've got some video and kind of going back and watching. Uh, it's still very clear that he's having a really great camp. He, he's uh, winning a ton, uh, causing a lot of disruption, even against the first team. Uh, now, we haven't had Zach Martin out there yet, and that will obviously kind of change some of the angles of this stuff. But uh, I felt like he has had a really strong camp so far. Um, another one I, I, that I think that has been, has been mentioned by other folks as well, but I think is worth noting is Wanye Thomas, uh, who is a safety. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's what it is, is that I just don't know that he was noticeable previously. I mean, yeah. just like, and it feels like he is, uh, you know, making plays out there. And then on top of that, also kind of making his presence felt like he's, uh, uh, loud out there he's communicating with the defense he's you know he, he feels very much like he belongs he's trash talking offense or uh, offensive players it, it feels like uh he his confidence level is high and, and he's playing at a high level which is is great uh and obviously he's taking a lot of advantage of of the the safety injuries that have been going on uh, do you think uh, he so looks better than marquis bell so far i haven't even noticed marquis bell too so, much you know yes. I, I, yeah i guess so i mean i've seen bell and coil a little bit uh, specifically kind of in, in some, you know, run defense stuff, like coming downhill, knifing through. And, and I think I saw Bell make a tackle for loss during one of the run drills. Uh, so I have noticed him uh, kind of in that role, but in the back end on coverage in coverage and that sort of thing, that's where I feel like I've seen Wanya kind of making plays uh, here and there. Interesting. And then one, one more, if I could real quick, Leighton Van Der Esch. I thought that was, was one also, of my names. Yep. Yeah, uh, sorry to steal from you, but I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll give you my two six real quick, and then I'll hand it over to you. I, I just feel like it's one of those things where we kind of have an, a level of expectation with with Leighton Van Der Esch. He's had such a crazy kind of roller coaster career so far in such a short time, yeah. uh, but it, it feels like the last two years specifically, it's been on a kind of a steady incline. He's played really good football last year, uh, and I feel like he's picking it up where he left off, and, and his health is is I think a huge part of that. Yeah, so Van Resch is one of my names. Um, what are we what are we using for the criteria for superstar? Like a non yeah, that's, global that's player, no right? Yeah, I think so, right? Okay. Like that, but, that will be standard. But my answer is Brandon Cooks. Never made a problem. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's not that I expected Brandon Cooks to look bad or anything. Yeah. But I'm kind of shocked at how quickly he and Dak seem like they're on the same page and how yeah. perfect of a fit he is in this offense. I'm I'm not sure that you could pick a a receiver that meshes better with CD Lamb. Like CD is great in so many things, but one thing CD doesn't have is like 
game changing speed, but that's what Brandon cooks has. And it seems like he just gets open all the time. He makes things look so routine. I, I I'm just surprised at how great he already looks in this offense. Yeah, I mean, uh, you definitely got in there on the technicality there, Marcus, but I, I'm going to let it slide because we, we need to talk about the fact that he's probably had the best camp of maybe almost anybody out here. Well, he's you a know? wide I mean, receiver, I, too. Do you could ever consider a wide receiver, too, a superstar? I, I mean, it's the Dallas Cowboys, so yeah, yeah, I guess probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I – I, I, but I agree. I mean, I think if, if we're talking about, you know, t- non-top-line players, uh, Cooks is, you know – if he's not in that category, he's certainly playing his way into that category uh, th- through this training camp. So he's had a, an incredible camp. And and again, it's the things that we, uh, you know, weren't necessarily anticipating the, the, the kind of uh, we, we expected the deep ball and yeah. a lot of that, but, but it's the underneath stuff that he's turned into big plays with his quickness and acceleration. It's, his chemistry that he's already built up with Dak and some of the scramble drills when things get tight and he's able to break open uh, the back end of the, of the end zone line for a touchdown. So uh, it's, it's, it, it's so much more, I guess, than what we expected and we had high expectations for him. And so that's, what's so exciting. I think with Ray. I, I want to ask you about just a couple other players that are having strong camps. Um, Rico Dowdle. I know we talk about him a lot on this show, but it seems like by all accounts, he is having, maybe the best camp of his career. What can you say about that? Yeah. I mean, I think he's looked really good. I, I mean, honestly, I think both him and Emily Davis have looked pretty good. Uh, they, you know, they've run the ball. Well, they've caught the ball. Well, uh, uh, you know, they just, uh, what you worry about with young running backs is blown assignments or uh, situations where they, you know, it's tougher to tell when they're running the football, but when they're in pass protection or they're out and route, like, are they executing the assignment? Are they where they're supposed to be? And, and it feels like when you see them, they're constantly playing with a level of confidence. No, there's not hesitancy. They both are attacking the whole well. I think for me, Dowdle is just more of a physical specimen, has a little bit more experience or at least equal levels of experience and been mm-hmm. in the league just a year longer. Um, I, I think that both are, have been really, really good. But, but to me, uh, Dowdle has come out here after you know a couple of different injury situations uh, where you feel like other folks may have uh, would fall off or or maybe not be able to keep it up. He's he inserted himself right into right back into that running back two mix just like he was last last year at this time, uh, and, and I think that or like running back three I guess at this point last mm-hmm. year, uh, and and I think that that's you know he's picking up where he left off and 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 at the very least you've got two I think quality running backs, uh, young running backs that you can choose from as, as kind of backup options if you don't want to go outside and get someone. Last thing before we move on, has there been a down-the-roster pass rusher, whether it's Isaiah Land or Tyra Sweet or any, any of those guys stand out to you so far in camp? I mean, it's tough because, like, honestly, the way – because of the stack at the top, everything's getting pushed out. The pass rush has just been so fierce, like, that everybody's getting home at, at this point. Um, I, I do think that – I mean, Fahoku has shown up several different times. We haven't really mentioned his name, and, but I, I think – We also haven't talked about Chauncey Golston really at all either. Well, I, I think that Golson, uh, you know, it's funny. We talked about him the first day, and I think I, I think you even asked me a question of does he look any bigger than he did the previous years, and I told you no. I would like to revise that answer because I haven't gone back and watched in a couple of days, and I actually posted another GIF of a uh, of, uh, ragdoll playing while, while he tosses a dude uh, onto the ground, which was just yeah. absurd. Uh, yeah, he's he he does look a little bit bigger. He's been showing us some stuff again. Harder for defensive tackles, I think, to kind of get in the mix there until the pads came on. Uh, Fahoku has been playing a little bit of inside and outside. It looks like uh, 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 Golson is fully inside as a defensive, tackle. which is good because that's where he needs to play. Like if he's going to yeah. make in the NFL, it's going to be as an interior player. Uh, and, and I think Fahoku, they have actually allowed to do some outside stuff. You see him kind of setting an edge at times. It is seemingly more kind of in five technique stuff. Uh, but you are seeing him kind of move inside and out. And he does that same level of violence that you see on tape, you know, translates well uh, out in the practice field so far. I just can't wait to watch the second, third string defensive line in the preseason go up against yeah. bad offensive linemen. I mean, it's going to be so much fun. It's probably the unit that I'm the most excited to see next week when we get to actually see them play in the preseason. Lana, let's, uh, we talked about some positive players from camp. 
Let's talk about who a couple of players whose stock maybe is falling a bit next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is so simple to add your job on LinkedIn. All you have to do is post your job and then put the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Every day, we're going to post another episode later tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, breaking down the Cowboys. Uh, this is the third padded practice, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Third, starting yeah. to run your, your, together. The third padded practice, so make sure you are on the lookout for that. But later, let's get to uh, some more questions. This one from Daryl. Can you guys do a stock down segment on some players since camp has started? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just like looking through my list right now. I mean, I think one guy that we have to, uh, uh, I mean, what an anomaly, a guy whose stock is down that is increased the likelihood that he's going to make the roster again. Uh, I, I, I just haven't really seen anything from Ronald Jones. I mean, look, he, he got suspended obviously. And, and that's kind of changed some of the angles. And, and again, like we said, Maybe it helps him make the the roster, uh, but I just haven't seen much, you know. And not, and I didn't have high expectations for him at all. Uh, but we just talked about those other two guys and, and how kind of you know decisive and, and 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 quick they look. And Jones doesn't look like he's making mistakes or anything out there, but he just doesn't look dynamic. You know, he doesn't look like the well, kind I of guy. Certainly not the guy that got drafted. Out of no, USC. and that's the difference is when he was coming out of USC. I think he was two hundred and five pounds. He was lean. He was explosive. And now you look at him and he looks like maybe the biggest running back on the team. Like he's big, like he's 225 pounds, but he's lost all the explosiveness. And if you got a running back that doesn't run with power, that doesn't have explosiveness, I don't know what you have. Yeah. And that's the funny thing is, is that, you know, I, we, you and I have talked about this kind of player before, right? The kind of player that has a lot of speed that as their career goes on, they uh, develop other aspects of the game. They either put on weight, good, strong weight, uh, and then their, their elite speed becomes just very good speed, but with, with bulk, right? Yeah. Uh, that didn't work with Ronald Jones. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he put on the weight and he lost all the speed, and now he just kind of looks a little sluggish out there. And so um, – Well, I think I know it, what happened. Bruce Arians has never liked these running backs that are under 200 pounds yeah. because they get hurt. And I think there was a guy that he had out in Arizona – um, I think it was JJ Arrington or Andre. Well, he was there for, wasn't he there for Ryan Williams too? Yeah. And he was there for Andre Ellington, but Andre yep. Ellington was like 185 pounds. Yep. They got on him about trying to make him a workhorse back. He first game, he gets hurt. Ronald Jones drafted by Tampa Bay, 205 pounds. He's the lead back. So Bruce Arians wanted him to bulk up, but he lost everything. Like he's just not the same player anymore that he was back in 2017 when he was at USC. And he was, uh, he was an odd evaluation too. He was a scat back type that was not a very good pass catcher. No. Like, so he, he, he kind of had an odd profile coming into the NFL. So, you know, it's sometimes it's just, it's an odd combination of, of things. Right. Um, I mean, I hate to tell you this buddy, but I, I, and we mentioned it before we came on here, but uh, I do think that Princeton fan has had a really struggle. I, I just, it just feels like every time I, I look over there and I see Princeton fans, He's dropping a pass, or he's getting beat, or something bad's happening. So that's because uh, they he, told him to drop passes. That's all. That's that's right. They're trying to they're trying to sneak him he, on. Like, he's really making the transition to tight end after not yeah. really ever doing it. So I, yeah. I'm not surprised it's taking him a while. He feels like a guy that's destined to be on the practice squad. Yeah, a lot of those down roster guys are honestly like uh, Seth Green is another one. Number 47 has really struggled out there. 
Uh, you know, just trying to kind of go through here and look through some of the guys. I think, you know, one guy that we have to mention that you brought up, honestly, simply because of, of situations and, and, and a lot of sometimes stock down has to do with other stocks going up, right? Yeah. Simi Fahoku has got to be on that list. You know, you brought him up, and I think that was a good inclusion because, you know, his injury is obviously something he can't really help. But, you know, he's getting a little bit behind the eight ball as guys like Jalen Brooks start to show out. And, and, and we haven't seen as much from Cropper lately. I didn't want to quite put Cropper on this stock down list yeah. because he hasn't been bad necessarily, but he has not necessarily kept up what he's what he started in the OTAs. But you see what you've got in Brooks. You see Cavante Turpin obviously – uh, really shining out and being a, a surprise kind of uh, addition as a, as a wide receiver, a true wide receiver in camp, right? Uh, and so you have to wonder if this isn't kind of hurting uh, uh, a semi stock as an opportunity to kind of make the team. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, Hoku is a tough one because he doesn't really give you a ton on special teams, right? He, he doesn't. He's not a kick returner. He's not a punt returner. And if he's not going to be your number four receiver, because because you know he's not he's not beating out Jalen Tolbert right now, and you've got Kevante Turpin who's starting to, to do more on the offense right now. It's how valuable is Fahoku is that wide receiver six, especially if you compare his uh, special team stuff compared to Jalen Brooks. Yeah. The other thing is, I don't know how much the Cowboys are going to tolerate drop passes and tipped yeah. interceptions. And I, I know this has only happened once, but I think Dak and this coaching staff is just going to be so much of don't drop passes. We need to be really flawless on offense. And every yeah. time that you make a mental mistake, we're just not putting up with it. Yeah, I mean, and 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 I think that that is where it feels like when Simi's healthy that it's the struggle is that we see a lot of – so big plays, big plays, big plays, and then stupid drop. Or, it's just or, because know, just... he hasn't played a lot either. It's just the this is the one of the things like when you're so late to playing football is you just don't yep. have the same experience as some of these other receivers. So it's not saying that he's not going to make the roster or anything, but no, but he needs to pick it up. Yeah, and especially he's got to come back from this injury soon. I, I think from what it sounds like, he might. Might be come back today. I don't know. Was he one of the guys that was in the walkthrough yesterday? I, I didn't see, I, but I think he might have been. So we might see him again today, which would be good because I do think he needs to kind of get back on the field and kind of get at it because yep. uh, you know guys are passing him at this point. Uh, any other names? Um, I'm just kind of looking through at the roster real quick to see if anyone's names pop up in my head. You know, I, I think that uh, there's a, there's a couple guy we'll there's the guy we're going to talk about who I feel like has gotten uh, unfairly maligned in, 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 the, in the media or at least you know overly maligned in the yeah, media. We'll get to him. Uh, but but I think there's another guy that have, kind of falls in, in that same category a little bit, and that's Chuma Adoga. Um, Chuma Adoga has had a very tough camp. I mean, yeah. tough in the sense that he's had to go exclusively against Demarcus Lawrence and uh, Micah Parsons at, at uh, while playing tackle and, and not playing very much guard, but uh, you know, and much like the guy we'll talk about here in a second, I, I have seen several, including lots of good snaps with Chuma Doga versus elite guys and, and, and him holding his own. Those aren't the ones that make it to Twitter, obviously, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, those are the ones that, uh, uh, that that get the retweets and 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 you know obviously we all know what what plays and what doesn't play on Twitter. Uh, I think that what what plays on the field at offensive linemen is, at offensive line is consistency. Yeah. Um, and and I think that consistently beating Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons is not something that, that anyone really does. Yeah. So uh, I think you know winning. 65 percent of your reps uh, uh is something uh, you know for a backup offensive tackle and i think that he's done mostly that uh he hasn't he's not moving a bunch of guys in the run game right now uh but i think he is not a uh a horrible liability as a pass protector as an offensive tackle i can't imagine what it feels like to be chuma doga right now where it's like okay <laughs> Thank goodness. I don't have Demarcus Lawrence or Michael Parsons lined up against me. Now it's just a number, a former number three overall pick in Dante Fowler. <laughs> yeah. Phew, now yeah. I can take a breath. Like that's the yeah. depth that he's got to face. Is you know that's like the probably the worst pass rusher he's going to go against at right tackle, which is insane. 
He's looking. He's looking at Tyron Smith. He's like, "You sure you you need a breather for this one? You don't want to, you don't want to come in and take this one real quick, man." Uh, like, well, the other thing is he's also learning multiple positions in a new yeah. offense. So at, he's in a really tough spot. I've got to believe he's one of these players that, as camp progresses and as he settles down yeah. a little bit, and once he faces not Michael Parsons, he's yeah, a Marcus yeah. Lords. Things yeah. are going to get a whole lot easier from him. Uh, yeah, you mentioned he looks good, though. He looks Go good. I, I just want to mention he looks good. He moves well. I, I, I think he'll be a fine addition to the offensive lineman and not a liability. You mentioned a, uh, a certain player that gets a little bit too much hate on Twitter. We're going to talk about that one next. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. August is here. And you know what that means. It is the official start of Fantasy Football Drafting Month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you do is one live snake draft. No waivers, no trades. Underdog set your best lineup every week. Try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament, the largest fantasy football contest of all time. It's back and it's even bigger with $15 million dollars of total prizes up for grabs, including an absurd $3 million going to the winner. Last year, the winner drafted their team in July, so you don't want to wait around. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and sign up with promo code Locked On to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That is Underdog Fantasy promo code Locked On. I absolutely love Underdog Fantasy. I do a draft oh, at least once a day, maybe twice a day. They are so much fun. Again, that is promo code locked on to get your first deposit doubled up to one hundred dollars. All right, Landon, we've got one more question here. Uh, this one from <laughs> at Bark. He wants to know: Does Kelvin Joseph make the fifty-three man roster for the Cowboys? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't predict it yet, but I will say that I do want to kind of get on the soapbox a little bit about Kelvin Joseph because, and 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 it's not even just about Kelvin Joseph. It's it's guys that we dogpile on Twitter, right? Like it's it's folks that doesn't that, happen, does it? It's it's folks that <laughs> it's folks that like there's a negative uh, connotation uh, towards them, you know, going into camp or going into the season or whatever. And any opportunity to, uh, uh, to, to increase that or to echo that, you know, the fans take this, take the chance. Let's the, the, obviously the example here is the video that's going around on Twitter of Kelvin Joseph being beaten by CD lamb in a one-on-one uh, rep uh, in, 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 you know, in the red zone, right? It, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter where it is because no, it's I'm a saying, one-on-one I, rep. Calvin yeah. Joseph had great coverage on that play. If you didn't see the play, it was a, it was a red zone rep. It basically was like a it's like a back shoulder type of fade throw to CD Lamb. It, oh, throw, that one. Yes, yes. Okay, I just said that, that C, CD the ball was poorly thrown and CD just made an unbelievable oh, yeah. catch. Yeah. And that, Kelvin that Joseph one, had awesome coverage. That one is like, that is good coverage. Like yeah. <laughs> that, that, that one I didn't even consider because I was just like, that one is just good coverage. And guess what? We have a good quarterback and, and CD lamb and that kind of thing will happen. The other one I was talking about was just like, the, there was a one-on-one rep. And again, it doesn't matter which rep, which one we're talking about. The, the, the fact is, is that people are posting these, these, these clips and, and just, acting like why is kelvin joseph on the team yeah that's like and, and, and that's just not the case like you know i've seen lots of reps out here uh where he's covered cd lamb in the slot and covered him well and and, and including the the one that marcus was just referring to where he yeah. covered him well and, and the ball just got thrown well so that's being a uh, defensive back those are it's gonna happen yeah and especially guys like just just stop posting or just stop retweeting the one-on-one stuff, man. Like it just, yeah. it's, it's a complete disadvantage. And it, it, it really is only showing like the only thing you can kind of take away from that is how well wide receivers can string along moves because defensive backs don't get left on an Island without other defensive backs around them with no part pass of what, rush, right. Part of, yeah, part yeah, exactly. Part of what is, 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 you know, uh, what your assignment is as a defensive back is to work with the other defensive backs in the defensive backfield and, yeah. and, and trying to divide up the portions of, of the attackable space. So like this, this is exercise is more about wide receivers getting the opportunities to kind of try different moves and then defensive backs get an opportunity to see those and, and figure out how to work it. It's not like a true 
oh, you're getting cut for this one on one situation. That's just not how things Never happens. work. So yeah. uh, and, 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 and I'll add in this is my last little bit on the soapbox aspect of this is that, you know, if, especially if you're from another team, go ahead and raise your hand if you have a nickel cornerback that CeeDee Lamb hasn't done that to. Because exactly. uh, if you if you do, then it's because we haven't played you yet. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get to you. Don't worry. Uh, and, 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 and don't I don't think being beat by CD Lamb is a prerequisite for uh, being a nope. bad player. Lots of really good players get beat by. Pre- yeah, by including players. lots of Pro Bowl and all pro corners that are in the NFC East last year. Uh, as for Kelvin Joseph, uh, I saw Mike McCarthy talking about him yesterday or two days ago saying, hey, it took a while for him to kind of get used to playing in the slot. He's getting there. Yeah. I saw Al Harris say that. Uh, this is the best camp that he's had so far. I he's agree. really settling in. Th- again, that doesn't mean he's he's a lock to no. make the roster, but it does seem like he's at least progressing in a way that the Cowboys are happy with. He's going to need to continue that over the next couple of weeks and through the preseason, but he certainly hasn't had his stock go down from training Here, camp at all. Here's the book on Kelvin Joseph. I'll give it to you real quick, right? Incredible athlete. The Maybe the best hips in all the cornerback room, period. Like he just is, is a, as fluid as it gets, great feet. He gets grabby. That's the issue, right? He gets grabby at the top of the routes, but he's gotten better about it. It's not like he's reaching and pulling jersey anymore. He's gotten more subtle. All defensive backs grab guys. Yep. All of them do. So the Move fact is it. about yeah, it's the it's the classic offensive lineman learn how to trip, clip, and hold. Right, that's yep. what defensive backs have to do. Learn how to become more subtle. I also think the move inside helps with that. It's harder for for uh, uh, the refs to see. <laughs> yeah. And then I also think his physical nature. That's the thing that he doesn't get enough credit for. He's a very physical player. He'll uh, tackle. I think yeah, he'll has no he has no problem with throwing his body around, getting t- uh, making tackles. I think that's really going to serve him well in the yep. nickel spot where things get physical. You, you have to blitz. I saw him coming in on a couple blitzes uh, on a run blitz where he wrapped around the back of the defense and pulled the running back from behind the line of scrimmage. So I do think that this is a good fit for him. I think that we should give be a little bit patient with him, allow him some opportunity because I think he has improved, uh, and I think that it's unfortunate that you know in the in the light of the fact that we are seeing improvement and we're seeing it kind of work for him for the first time that he is still now being kind of yeah. land blasted for something that again is just part of practice it isn't really an, a, 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 a slight against him in any kind of way all right that is it for today's show we want to thank you for making locked on cowboys your first listen every day again every day or we got another show coming later tonight 10 p.m eastern time 7 p.m pacific time after practice, breaking down all of Landon's notes out from Oxnard. So make sure you tune in for that. Follow us on YouTube, Locked On Cowboys. We are free and available on all platforms. Follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. And we'll see you guys next time.